Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to TRG Central. Tonight we're bringing you a special broadcast. We'll be pre-playing the 2024 Pegasus World Cup race along with a couple claiming races. Yes, you heard me. Main and claiming races will be run first and then the World Cup. Uh, let's go ahead and get this thing on the road. Okay, so what we have done is I created a little uh, what I call random 2024 races. And we'll get activated here. Oh, 2024 random races. And what this does is I'm getting uh, <coughs> past performance race charts of various races once every day or two from various sources online. And I'm making the, uh, the horses to run in them. These horses will probably never make a regular set because they are so, so good. And we'll show you some right now. Let's go over to the roster. And let's do Horse Master. And there you go. You probably have never heard of any of these horses. There are 16 so far in the... Uh, in the random mini set. And you can see they're from various locations throughout the world. But the cool thing is to go through the ratings and look at these ratings. Best rating in the set so far is a 72 on dirt. Let's see what we got. And the same horse is a 72 on turf. You should see his ratings are exactly the same. So he probably split his, his races among the two types of tracks. So, that's a relatively interesting thing for me in the sense that these are going to be horses that maybe even you, the, the user that owns the game, may like this day that they're just to fill out uh, maybe a user data disk that you're kind of creating and has some lower echelon horses. There won't be one more report that's the races and so far we have two of them that I've done this in the last couple weeks. And you see there's a main and claiming race and then a regular claiming race. So we bring up the main and claim and you see there's nine horses. And these are actually real life races that were scheduled throughout the year at various tracks across the United States. And then there's the other one, it's just a claiming race. And there you have that one. So, what I'm also doing is I'm putting it, created a little schedule form, so we're going to go ahead and run these two races, and then we'll go on to our feature event, the Pegasus World Cup. So let's go ahead and run the schedule, and there you see the two, <coughs> two races. We've already seen the field, so I'm just going to lock the the fields in place and we're now ready to go ahead and run these two races. So let's go ahead and get the race started. There you go, it's a six furlong race. Main claiming on dirt for four plus year old purse is a whopping twenty two thousand dollars. And we're gonna leave the track condition as fast. So I guess we're ready to start this race. 
Oh, there is one thing I, I happen to want to say about this particular race. This race is run on the racetrack in northeastern Ohio called the Morning Mahoning Valley Race Course. Now, where I grew up, that's only maybe uh, less than 10 miles away from my home and hometown of Warren, Ohio. So, I thought this was a pretty interesting race to pick up is actually quite a race that was run on a, a hometown track. So, we're going to go ahead and get the race started. You see, even though these horses are not very good as far as uh, pop quality, you see that there looks like this could be a really interesting race to wager on. Now, let's go ahead and get to the race track. Now, since I don't have the Mahoney Valley track in the game. We're going to run this on our TRG down track. So we have everybody all set up. And I think we're just going to go ahead and let her up. Remember, this is a six furlong race, so it'll be relatively quick, which means let's take a look at this regulator. Yeah, it's pretty low. Dropped it a little more just to. See if we can get a, a rain actually develop and you can see it. So let's go ahead and get this race going. And then they're off. And that's, well, we have somebody that has one auto jockey couldn't use up all of their points. So let's see if we can do a better job. This is Fenwick Jack. We'll undo him. In horse two, we can pop here and take a quick look at his, at his uh, <coughs> statistics. And now, yes, I remember there was one horse that didn't even race yet. And he's four years old, didn't race as a two or three year old, and is running his first race ever. So we'll go ahead and see if we can do a little better job than the jockey did. One, two. So, let's see if we can go all the way around them. Maybe not. He has quite a few forward moves left. He does have three sideways. And we can use another sideways to get him outside a little more. And then he... And we still have one sideways, so we can just move him in. And as of right now, he's actually leaning the back. And owner must be really jumping up and down. Let's go ahead and get to resume back to pay the road. Everything is okay from this. So it's tower and now we're off for game turn two. And another horse. Brad's monkey has four points up. Well we have to do something about that. Where's Brad's monkey? Horse nine. And there's his car. See, he's run a few races in the last year. And these, this race record here is actually for 2023. Remember, this race was run in January, and probably his first race of the year. So let's see where he's at. It looks like he has a straight track, so we're just going to let him go straight. Probably the other jockey tried to get him in better position against the rail, but... You can see, we can even move down one, actually two, and then he's in very good position and actually out in front. And there we go, we're heading into the uh, five turn. Remember, this is just six furlongs, so it'll end pretty quick. Oh, we have who? Check my six. Hey, we have a jockey inquiry too. Oh my. Oh, he's horse three. He has three movement left. Maybe he can swing outside and get a little closer. So we'll put him back to where he was. And you can see kind of most of these jockeys on these horses are not very good either. They're usually local jockeys here. 
you can see here, check my six, has only raised two horses in his lifetime. Oh, wait a minute. We're going to at least do this. We're going to go up. See how much it costs me to go here. So I'm going to have to use up a point. Let me slide out. Let's see how far he goes here. He doesn't have anything left, so he's like neck and neck. It doesn't matter a whole lot. So. Go on to the next horse, and we'll just resume spectator mode. So with Tower says everything's fine, and we let him go. And we're now into the home stretch. We have horse seven, Gold Bane. He crosses the finish line, and it looks like he's going to be the winner. And there you have it, Gold Bane, with a wager on him for win, who's in 1740, place 890, and show 580. You see the purse was uh, 22000 he made a whopping $13,000. Now, if you were playing this in the uh, table management system, these horses may have been up for claiming, since this was the main claiming rate. Which means that maybe one of the owners could have purchased a horse or two from this race. Oh, uh, there's our friend with Jack. Even though he, he got out to an early lead, he really faded pretty bad and came in last place. Oh, well. So much for a debut there. And there were no fouls, even though we thought that there was a, an issue spotted. They... Waved it up, and we'll go on to the next race. <coughs> and that'll be a, a claiming race. And we've already seen the field, so let's go ahead and get this race under the way. And there you have the... And you see, again, like I have said, these, even though these horses aren't really that good, they're actually very interesting horse races to wager on. And probably why they're still very popular. There is eight to ten races run daily. A lot of races like this: maiden races, claiming races, and allowance races. This uh, claiming race is uh, has a purse of forty-one thousand, nearly twice as much as the other. And we're going to run this one on turf, and I think you'd actually run it. Golf stream, but we're switching it to a higher layout part because golf stream's not in the game either. So, so we'll give this a start. It looks like Cadet Corp is the odds on favorite at 3.4 to 1. That's $3.40 for every dollar wagered. So let's go ahead and start the race. And okay, this time. These horses may have ran a few more races than they're claiming, so we're going to display each one of them. Remember how to do this. There you go. Okay, we have horse three out of the gate first. Stanberg, you can see him, he's, he's rated a whopping 67. And we have Sandberg. And then we have Swan Lake. Right of the big 70. Then we have the Great Oz. Right of the uh, 69 on turf. That's interesting. You have the better rating on dirt. And then we have Grand Journey and four. Clear Vision is horse five. And the final horse. Whoops. Not quite the final horse. There's a lot of. Is a 69, and there we have all of our horses, and then you see our favorite at 72. Okay, just to have an idea here, and just to, to show you this is kind of cool that you wanted to do this, you click on roll. Oh, 
So we look at Vampire, and he rolled a 7, which is a 0. And then he rolled a 4 on the second roll, and you see we have him highlighted. He's on the first turn of the game, and he rolled in the second column and got a 28. That's quite high, but we maxed him out at 13, so that's not too bad. I'm going to come over here and view this report. The movement chart, they'll tell you here that we have over 30 points, 28 and 5, 33. And you see the chart goes up to 30, and that would have given us a 15. And then it would have been 15 forward, 2 and 1, but it, <coughs> we capped the forward movement at 13. So we need a 13, 3, and 2. Okay, so we'll go ahead and we'll uh, hit this horse. And I don't think you go inside for the cost two points there, but you're still on the curve. Okay, so as you can see that, we'll get rid of these. Here we'll go ahead and, well, maybe not. Let's just stack them all up on top of each other. They went and Sandberg's turn. The race track over a little bit, then you see Swan Wake is the second one up. And we'll go ahead and do spectator mode and finish this race. And as you see, if you would just roll on uh, and, and running each individual horse, that horse pops up. And you can see a little bit about each of the horses and their carts. Okay, well, it looks like we're coming up on the end of the race, and we have Tamburo. Grand Journey just barely met you. Getting first. See what the, uh, the finals are. Tamburo first, Grand Journey second. Boy, our favorite. Did not do well at all. You can see in the frame for that you had the most money wager. You can see uh, there wasn't a whole lot of money wager that are high on here. But anyway, Tamar walked away with $24,000. His uh, entrance fee was about $20,000. So you can see he came out. I mean, uh, 2000 he came home with quite a bit of money. Okay, so, I think that's it from CRG Central. Now, it's one of the two preliminary races that we run. And later on this evening, we'll have a second video that I'll have the... Uh, <clears throat> I'm sorry, I'll have the, uh, the Pegasus World Cup. Well, I think we have time before I have to get out of here, so let's go and activate this. Okay, this is the Pegasus World Cup. New reports. We we'll take a quick look at the horses here, and there's your thirteen horses, there's, and their ratings. And you see, even here, we're not we, National Treasure is the best of eighty-seven. So, even though most of the horses are kind of grump grouped into the eighties, there is no really outstanding horse in this field. So, let's 
go ahead and go to the schedule. And you'll see the schedule is broken up into two weeks because we have a prelim and then we have the finals. Mainly because there's actually seven, 13 horses. And we, as you all know and watch the videos for TRG can only handle 10. Wait, uh, 10 per right. So we'll go ahead and lock these two fields in. We'll go ahead and run the two preliminaries now. Then we'll come back later in the evening with the finals. Um, well, let's go ahead and get this started. This is Heat Race 1. You see the Pegasus World Cup is for four-year-olds and higher. The nine furlong race, Grade 1. A little different than those claiming races and many of the races we ran <coughs> as preliminary races to this. And as you see, the odds are a bit different. You see National Treasure, which has the best rating in, is the favorite. And then you have Dynamic One sitting way, 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 way back. So, we're going to run these at higher layer. I, I imagine these must be run a golf stream in, in real life, but if we don't have golf stream, we're going with Hialeah. You can see down here that we have a new feature called linking uh, races to other races. So in this, uh, it's good for tournaments and it's also for heat races that have finals. So this says here that uh, this race will be linked to the Pegasus World Cup Finals, which means when we uh, set up the field for the final, it'll give us the horses that were in this race and the next race, tell us how well they did, and then we can select the best from, from the two races. So we'll go ahead and get this race started. the seven race field and you see it them class dynamic one trademark national treasure grand Osman, Crooked and Castle Chaos. I think Krupa, let's take a look at his part. Yeah that's polite thought he <coughs> his sire is curling so that's kinda of interesting. So, okay, anyway, let's get the show on the road. Everything's good from the sewage tower, and they're off. First out of the gate was uh, National Treasure. Besides being the favorite, he got out of the gate first. And he just moved ahead here in the back stretch. And this is nine furlongs, so this is just about completely around the track. And National Treasure has a little bit of distance on the, on the rest of the pack. And you, we have found out he was definitely the favorite. It looks like he's the coach to a win. We have Trademark with some left. Let's go ahead and undo Trademark. And 13. Let's see if we can get him at least to 7. Now we waited until here to go outside because see <coughs> the darker brown ones cost an extra point to move through. So it costs two movement to go outside in the turn and he still has five left. Which means, hmm, let's see what happens if we give another forward movement there. Give him another forward movement there and then he still has and unfortunately, it's going to cost them two to get there, and that kind of runs out. But it, he probably could have just ended up there anyway. So it doesn't look like we did a whole lot. The auto jockey did a good job. Okay, let's just resume the race. And there you have it. Looks like it's going to be National Treasure winning it by quite a 
quite a large distance. Oh no, we have a jockey inquiry on National Treasure. He must have did something in the early portion of the race. And he has knocked out a first. Do you believe that after how well he did? And you see, he went six furlongs ahead of Castle Chaos. Oh my god. You know, Castle Chaos gets the win. We'll head over now to the second race in this. Here, so let's go ahead and take a look at this one. Deep race two. You can see that these horses are pretty close together. Be a good race. Points to gold and Skippy Long Saki. I imagine some of you remember Skippy Long Saki. He's been in a couple of our sets throughout the last few years. So let's go ahead and start this race. And got O'Connor, White the Gold, Senior Papukar. Oh well. First mission. And I think, I'm not sure, Double I, Carlotto, or Ah Ah, Bacardo, and then Skippy Longstocking. And you see Skippy Longstocking is going to be out of the gate first, so might be able to get inside there before everybody else does on the first turn. Yeah, they didn't even try to get in the inside. That's very interesting. See if that costs them anything at the end of the race. Oh, well, he's on the outside now. And he pulled in second, O'Connor is first. And looks like he is, O'Connor is going to win this one. Unless, of course, we have some type of, oh, no. Skippy nearly pulled it off and loses to O'Connor. Okay, you have O'Connor first, Skippy Long Talky second, Senior third, point to go fourth. Now we'll end it. And I think we have plenty of time to set up this last race before I have to head out of here. So let's go ahead and show you how that'll work. And there's your Pegasus World Cup Finals. You see there's no entry yet. Three million dollar first. Uh, let's add the field. And you see these are all the horses that ran in the two heat races. And it ranks them on how well they did. Even though National Treasure didn't win the race, he still had the best performance. So we're going to take the top eight. Um, then we'll revert. And then we'll... We'll take the top eight, and then we'll do a post position draw. Yeah, that's what we'll do. So let's go with National Treasure, O'Connor, Skippy, Senior. And you see, it does tell you the time. There's also like this is our tiebreaker system. So the lower. The higher this number, the the better they're off. So we have a lower number here and a higher number there. And that's the, the placement in the final. So it's four, points of flag five, castle chaos will be six, grand out seven, and Macario eight. Now we had a very interesting thing in the in the program for Texas World Cup this week. They were showing Chippy Long talking and Double I Makuro, both having Tyler Ruffiano. And so I imagine probably at post time obviously you can't run both. So either one of the horses isn't gonna compete or they're going to need a, a second jockey. So 
If I was a two, let's see if we can find some other two and put it in here for him. Yeah, here's Trevor. He's not on any horse, so let's take all those. See, everybody's carrying 123. We'll go ahead and save the field. And let's go ahead and we're going to randomize post position. There's the post positions that we created. And like I said, we went from best to worst in top eight. We'll randomize them. And National Treasure still gets the first position. O'Connor slides all the way out to seven. Okay. Uh, we'll do yes. Post positions have been randomized. Let's lock them. And let's go ahead and run the fire. Final three million dollar Pegasus World Cup. You see, National Treasure is the favorite, and in lane one, they'd be tough to beat. Now let's go ahead and get to the track. Slow down the race a little bit so it's nice to see the how it how it pans out and. We're good to start. Well, um, alright. So we won't start. National Treasure, Senior, Medicolo, Jimmy Long, Stocking, Horse to Fly, Grand Aspen, O'Connor, and Castle Chaos. Now we're ready. And as I said, National Treasure got out of the gate first. And he's leaning on into the back stretch after the first turn. It's a nine for a long race, so we're not quite half done yet. We're only on turn three here, turn four. And we have a pretty good race between National Treasure and Skippy Longstocking. Skippy just passed National Treasure going into the back stretch. We'll see how well they do in front end. No, National Treasure just passed Skippy. Heading into the, uh, Home stretch in the National Treasure with a slim lead over Slippy. And oh, National Treasure putting some distance between him and Skippy. And it looks like it's going to be National Treasure, Skippy, and Hoist the Gold. And there you have it. There's the final National Treasure. Skippy Long Socking Four Links behind Hoist and Hoist. The gold seven and the corner nine. Jim, National Treasure walks away with, I probably should say, trots away with one million eight hundred thousand dollars. And uh, Jockey on National Treasure with John follows the way there. Well, I think that's in me now in from PRG Central. We, we ran a couple of really interesting preliminary races, especially if you the wagering time with a main and then a claiming race, and then the two preliminary heat races for the World Cup and then the World Cup final. Well, this is Gary signing off. Hopefully you had a very good time watching the races, and good night.